Okay, so um, we seem to have hit a bit of an end pass here. Um, what we wanted to do was increase the compression on this motor a little bit more, but um, being a side valve motor, we are very limited. We have our hot bolt. I could maybe take that from 12 to 14 mil, but that's not going to give us very much. Um, I tried putting a longer spark plug in there, but it hits the exhaust valve. So there's very little room between the exhaust valve and the spark plug as there is. Uh, maybe one mil at the most, which means we can't even shave any off the head. So hence the reason side valve engines can only reach a uh, certain point of efficiency and a uh, certain point of uh, modification which we pretty much well reached. We nearly increased the efficiency of this motor by um, 100% so that wasn't too bad going for an old side valve motor. Um, and yeah, this is why side valve motors were phased out. You, there's really a uh, very small limit as to what you can do with them in way of enhancing performance and fuel efficiency and that sort of thing. I use this motor because um, that is one I found in the uh, storage shed out the back. Um, and I know it was a good runner, which we've seen, and um, hence that's the reason we decided to use this one. Um, what we really need is a um, engine with overhead valves at least. Um, one with overhead valves, overhead cams would be really nice, but overhead valves and uh, push rods for this RPM would um, do just nicely. So I went and had another deeper dig in our storage shed out the back and down in the back corner I found a heap of these engines. Um, some are five and a half, some are six and a half, some are seven and a half. And you can't really tell until you get the head off and have a look. So I have three fairly um, complete engines and uh, we have a, a block and a head behind that one. So um, they're an overhead valve uh, push rod engine. The um, Chinese version of the Honda. Um, some you get are well made, some you get a very crap. So um, there we go, that's what we've found. So I'm going to take the time um, tonight, I'm going to uh, take that motor off of our um, generator, our little side valve motor, because we've uh, pretty much well reached its limit, and I'm going to put in its place one of these engines once I do a bit of um, stripping and see what's what. Now the good thing about these engines is the head. Uh, we can shave without too much problem at all, uh, somewhere here, and I can do it in the lathe. So um, this one here, this is one we won't be using for this test because I have taken 10 mil off of this head, and as you can see I've had to weld up all the way around here, um, I'll have to remachine it. and. Um, yeah, so we've taken 10 mil off of that one, which we won't be taking off of those ones. This is for a different project, one I've mentioned. Um, unfortunately, the head on that project, after a long run, um, decided to crack down through the valve seat. So um, I'm just building up a new one for that project. But um, that's uh, entirely different, like I said, than what we're doing here. Um, that is off my compression ignition gasoline engine, or we'll be going on to it due to me buggering the other one up. Anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, get one of these motors put together, run it up, make sure it runs okay. Then we're going to change it out for our little side valve motor there. And what we're going to do um, without adjusting anything on our new motor is we'll run the test 
under the same load and actually see what the fuel consumption is. So we want to see if a bigger motor working less uses as much fuel as a small motor working more. Um, as far as motor size goes, work to um, cubic capacity you could say. So um, that's what we're going to do. Throw one of their motors on our um, generator or our load generator and run one of the uh, new, I would think they're all six and a half those ones, run one of them up um, in standard trim like we did with our little side valve and see where we're at to start with and then uh, we'll skip all the other processes that we've already been through once we've got a um, baseline figure um, I'll just go straight ahead and um, put the variable main jet set up in one of the carbies for those bigger motors uh, I believe this one here that we have in our little motor will fit straight in um, they both use 6mm bowl bolts and they both screw into the um, main jet tube so I think it's just a matter of swapping that straight over um, get that running to perfection we'll have a look um, and see if we made an improvement there and then what we're going to do is um, start shaving the head so um, these heads are very easy for me to uh, shave down and we'll go at one mil increments until we reach such a point where we can hear the motor starting to be a little unhappy um, with a, you normally hear a slight detonation starting to take place and um, once we hit that point I'll just retard the timing a little and we'll continue on from there. So the reason we're doing this is um, the final event is our HHO cell is going to go on here onto our um, system and we're going to see if there's any improvement in fuel economy running HHO. So many questions, oh, so many claims and so many counterclaims. Um, it's hard to know what's true and what's false. So we'll find out um, in this video, well not in this video, in this series of videos, if HHO actually makes a difference. But first, there's no point in banging HHO on an engine and seeing an improvement if we can get those same improvements um, simply by doing some slight moderations to the engine. So first we have to get the engine up to its maximum performance as far as fuel efficiency goes, the amount of fuel in to the amount of mechanical power out. And once we've reached that limit, we'll then add the HHO and um, see if we get a difference. Because um, putting HHO in a standard motor is really it's pointless. Um, when you run HHO, you want a very high compression you can run higher compressions when you're using HHO than you can on standard fuel um, and you also need to retard the timing a little because um, when you add HHO to your fuel air mix um, it increases the uh, burn rate of that fuel so um, that means if you leave the timing where it is all you're going to be doing is putting um, burning more of your fuel before the piston reaches top dead centre um, which puts more stress on the crank and results in less power out so you want it to ignite a little later uh, closer to top dead centre we can get it the better and um, that's when HHO starts to play its part after you've done all the engine mods that you have to do alright so that's enough for me I'm going to uh, go and get one of these motors together and mount it up and um, See if we can get one to run, and uh, we'll come back in another. We'll, in the next video, we'll have a look, see how we went.